I waited that six months instead of jumping in so I didn't have that much left. But I'm like, okay, this last 1500 is going to Ninja Teacher and it changed my life. Ooh, okay, it nice. Did. <laughs> How come? So we get started? Yeah, let's go. So today we've got Annie with us. Hi, Alex. <laughs> So yeah, let's chat a bit about your experience of moving to Vietnam and what made you first want to come out here to Vietnam? I followed the boy here, so we were kind of having a hard time in the States and he's like, I want to bounce. Um, I heard v Vietnam's a cool place and I was like, you know what, let's follow this random boy I just met and now we're engaged. Amazing. So you decided to pack up, move to Vietnam. And what was the plan when you first decided to move here? So the boy that I met is a digital marketer and he said, you can get into digital marketing as your plan A and if things doesn't work out, you can be an English teacher and things did not work out for the six, like for six months. Uh -huh. So I had to like really think about being an English teacher and like it kind of really helped me out in my, my, my path. You were here for a little while in Vietnam. What was your first experience of arriving in Vietnam? Like, how did you enjoy being here when you first got to Vietnam? Oh, it's wild, like fast traffic, all these cars, people driving everywhere. But just having the freedom to kind of decide what to do with your time, I needed that time to think about what's next for me. And I'm glad that being here helped me. Yeah. yeah. What were you doing back home before you came? I was a cotton candy artist, so I made cotton candy animals and I um, served them at parties. Oh, cool. Yeah, in LA. <laughs> so, like, LA parties are wild. Right. Uh, so, I was lucky enough to do that, but I wanted to do more for my future. Six months in Vietnam, did, you, did it take a while to get settled in and start to appreciate living here? Yeah, I really just liked having a ritual, you know, when you can just go out for a pho on the street with the pho lady, right? And she closes up at noon, so you have to get to her before. Just having that time to figure out what's next. Yeah, because I like came here because I wanted to um, like start a new career, start a different life. Like I wasn't really happy with the one that I had back then. So mm -hmm. every teen really helped with that. You said after that period of time, you decided to give teaching a try, so what was your thought process there? You're like, okay, I'm gonna do teaching now and give that a shot? Yeah, I was super hesitant about teaching because like, I saw your course and I felt like that was the best way to get through it, but like, for the price, it was hard because like, I wasn't making any money. Um, so I waited about like that six months instead of jumping in, so I didn't have that much left. But I'm like, okay, this last 1500 is going to Ninja Teacher and it changed my life. Ooh, okay, it nice. Did. <laughs> How come? Because if I just like continue waiting, I would just be losing um, my funds. But because I invested in what, the teaching, I had a community to support me. Like G taught me how to speak my first Vietnamese, right? Empowered me. I met like your teachers, Claire, that taught me how to teach really well, grow that confidence. Mm. Yeah. And you and Claire ended up being like friends we're afterwards best and friends. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, we're still best friends. That's awesome. And the, the community, because before I didn't really um, go out as much because, you know, being in a new country is scary. And so being a part of your community helped open me up. I remember you sent us and Claire like some really nice messages about how Claire really inspired you as a teacher, right? Yeah, Claire is just so sweet. She was able to break down things for me to understand. I have quite a insecurity about like my learning abilities and being a teacher was something I was scared of because I'm like, oh, if I'm not the best at English, how can I teach English? Mm -hmm. But then um, Claire like looked at me and she's like, you can do this, Annie. And I realized what you gave to me was just like, a, one-on-one -on -one experience that I needed that I couldn't get from reading a book or doing those classes where they just give you pamphlets yeah. or just passing an exam because that's easy to do but I wanted that confidence that I could be a great teacher. That practical experience. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Nice. So then after that, the course um, you went on and you taught for 
I think you said a year and a half, right? Yeah, yeah, I taught for a year and a half. And then what happened was like COVID happened and the schools shut down and we went yeah. online. But the online classes got slashed in half. Okay, so yeah. everyone's competitive for these classes. So you're used to making like 150K a month and now it's to 300. Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, right, right. And so the hours were reduced. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. At that point, you were like, okay, I'm gonna get back to that. Uh, the other plan of doing social media marketing yeah. stuff. Yeah, because like teaching English was only like twenty hours a, a week to make fifteen hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and so I was able to take the extra time to do like little podcast editing things to get myself through the door of digital marketing and building trust and then i was able to get my first job because i was desperate i'm like okay i need to apply to a digital marketing job because teaching is not doing it for me right now and um, i got my first remote job as a community manager doing social media yeah we were talking about that just now is like how with teaching you do have quite a nice schedule in terms of like you can work on other projects and hobbies and stuff because yeah. even uh, outside of times like covid uh, most teachers are teaching around 20 hours a week, so you have extra time and was that something that you found helpful? Oh my gosh, it's amazing what you can do with the extra time. 20 hours for work and 20 hours for yourself means like, what do you care about? For me, it was working on my mental health and low self-esteem because I kept thinking I wasn't as smart. That's why I pushed off uh, English teaching for six months. I discovered that I had ADHD mm. here, so in like maybe another six months, I had that time to invest into uncovering my ADHD and how to like hack myself mm. so I could be more um, functional, I guess. Nice, so you got to work on yourself. Yeah, and, and after that six months journey, you can like transmute that and like what else does like Alex or Annie want to work on this mm -hmm. next six months? And for me, it was aerial silks. That's fun. It is. Like we, we maybe we got to get some clips to like put in the video here to to show here everyone. Here you go. Because I didn't really know what that was until recently. <laughs> oh my god, there's so many cool things in Ho Chi Minh that you can do. There's like boxing, Muay Thai from like th Thai fighters here, MMA. Like that's all fighting sports. But we were just saying how like that builds us such a sense of community when you can just play together and see everyone all at once. But like you said, volleyball, you could play volleyball. And there's pickleball, pickleball. now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to get me into pickleball. I will. I'll do volleyball too, and then we can trade. What are some of the other things that you like to do in Vietnam in your free time? OK, there's something I've been grappling with, right? Because we have so much extra free time, you get to decide, oh, do I want to just have fun with my time, or mm. do I want to kind of uh, focus on my career or build out my business? So I'm in that transition right now because after working for my social media job, I took a break to kind of work on myself and get into aerial silks. Mm. And now naturally things are happening where people are asking me for social media services. Mm. So I'm like, okay, I need to switch gears and like really take the time that I went like having fun, aerial silks, sports, and like drive it towards that direction of like, yeah, let's focus on making good stuff for my clients yeah okay nice yeah so you can transition whether you just want to have more fun and do interesting activities or actually focus on some kind of side project and yeah. hustle and build even you know full-time thing on the side yeah it's amazing seeing you do it like you, you've been doing it for a really long time and watching your channel grow like you have like such a great balance of like fun hanging out with people and also working on your biz yeah, and I've seen lots of other people do that kind of stuff too. Do you know Tyler? He has a bar called Lost and Found. Really awesome bar. Ninja teacher alum came through our programs. Uh, so and cool. he's got, I think he's got like three bars now. He just started it on the side. Now he does that full time. Uh, so yeah, there's all sorts of cool projects that people do while they're um, teaching and then start working on other things. That's like what I want people to realize that they can come in here, teach English. That is not the only thing they can do. There's so much more. Having the free time to discover what's next. Like I didn't think that I would come in, be a teacher and then skip to doing social media and then starting my own like business. Like 
And I realized that being in Vietnam allows you to start your own business faster. Mm. Yeah, mm. or even consider it because you have the time to do that. Right. Amazing. Yeah. What would you say are some of the best experiences you've had while living in Vietnam? Going on the Hai Giang Loop, baby. Ooh, ha have you just been on that motorcycle by yourself and you're like, life is on the line? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing there, right? It's so beautiful. You actually drove it yourself? Yeah. So nice. the thing is that I don't drive in the city because like I create too much of a personal space and then everyone thinks I'm going to cut you off. And so then I fall over. But if you're driving by yourself, only one lane, you in the mountain in the air, it's really beautiful and meditative. Yeah, I love cross country rides in Vietnam. So fun. Yeah. yeah. So the Hazang Loop. Have you done some more travel around Vietnam while you've been here? Yeah, when you go on to the turtle, what's that turtle lake? No, not turtle, turtle lake. lake. Um, they look like turtle backs. The island. Um, oh, it's Talong an island? Bay. Oh, Halong no. Bay. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the gotcha. <laughs> Okay, I see what you're going for, yeah. Have you been on their cruise where they, they take you yeah, onto these mountains yeah. in the ocean? Mm, so, really beautiful. What else can you tell me about I Vietnam? Tell you from about Vietnam. Vietnam. One thing that's really cool is that people are hungry for more events, mm. right? So if you have like an event that you really enjoy back home and you want to emulate that here, people are more willing to like have that. For example, my boyfriend, Matthew, he really loves um, stand-up comedy and just doing it out here um, and having like one minute live comedy stand-up and people love that. Mm, they come yeah. through for like the human con um, <laughs> observations, you know, like yeah. human connection, yeah. Yeah, and he does all the stand-up events here at different venues and uh, lots of people come out and see his shows, right? Yeah. So there's, there's stand-up comedy here, open mic nights, Stand-up comedy is really, really fun. Have you ever gone up? I remember no. you, we had stand-up comedy right on top of the ninja, build, uh, ninja teacher building. Oh yeah, that yeah. old location, we had like the rooftop there. That's where Matt started his comedy career. Oh, that's cool. That was a cool location. Now we're out here in, in Bintan district, which is, is also nice. I really like um, Bintan because like between district one and district two, you're right in the center of the city. So you also live out there, right? Yeah, we have our, our own little like neighborhood where um, one of my friends is our neighbor. Mm. So then we call each other up for lunchtime. It's really sweet. Do you I, like your apartment? I do. I love the walkability of Vietnam when you're in these like communities. Mm. I realize like living in LA or San Francisco, everything's like 30 minutes away. And so you have mm. to mentally commit to seeing your friend. I see. Yeah. Right? Versus like right now, I'm going to meet you up and it's only 10 minutes. I get on a grab bike yeah. and I'm there. It's yeah. so easy. And so you're in like one of the big apartment building complexes, a few different buildings. There's a nice area around there, right? Where you can walk around and then yeah. grab bikes to get around. Quite oh convenient. My gosh. And there's mini corner stores everywhere. Oh, yeah. Edit in GS Hai Mui Lam, mini stop all in one strip and copy and paste on the next block. Yeah. There's like mini yeah. stores everywhere. Right. Yeah, it's super convenient to where you're living. And how do you like all the food and restaurants in Vietnam? Oh, oh. Okay, layers, layers, layers. Like, do you want to eat like street food? We got street food. Do you want to eat like fusion, like Michelin chef cooking? You got that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there's Ang Ang Saigon that's like fine dining, but it's super um, affordable so that everyone can have an op option of trying their dishes. Mm -hmm. And one of them is Mom Tom ice cream. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Cut Mom Tom ice cream. I don't even know how I would do that because Mom Tom is like the fermented fish paste. Yeah. And then ice cream. That's really... I forgot to tell you what I was... So they put it in a perfume bottle, right? Uh. And they go... Right? Just a little bit so you get the salty flavor uh. on ice cream. So it's okay. like caramel ice cream. I can see that being good. Yeah, that yeah. is so good. And uh, it, it is like pricey, but then if you have like a really nice date night and you want to impress a friend or your 
people. <laughs> yeah. You can bring them there. Every once in a while, do something a bit fancy, but then street food, Vietnamese food, super cheap and affordable. Yeah. And then even like the Western food at like normal restaurants is like not too bad. You know, you can afford to go out and, and eat at different restaurants here in uh, Tao Dien and yeah. other districts as well. Or if there's like food that you're missing back home and you know people want to eat it, you can start your own small little business. Mm. Everything's coming back to, down to business, baby. <laughs> so what I like to do with all this free time I have is like I make these um, meals for my friends and I send them through Grab so what? that they can eat it. Yeah. All right, so I'm just saying I'm expecting a meal coming through Grab sometime soon. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I'll make you one of these sous vide chickens and you have to send me a like, story after. Okay, deal. Yeah. Let me tell you a random story. I met a uh, MMA fighter, no wait, Muay Thai fighter, and she's been fighting for like six years. And I wanted to just make her some chicken because like these lean chicken with like no sauce is like the best protein for, for fighters and trainers. So I'm like, hey, I made you this. And I sent it to her to grab and like she loved it. Nice. There's like, a gym not far from here, I think. There's so many Muay Thai gyms. Are you into that? Uh, no, don't really do the, the fighting stuff. I did judo when I was younger. Yeah. Got to like green belts. Are you gonna do some judo on me now? Sorry, I actually don't know what judo is. is uh, like yeah, 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 more like that. Yeah, All throws and stuff. <laughs> what do you think your plan is with uh, life in Vietnam? Are you gonna stick around for a while? See how things go here? Do wow. you have any long-term plans? Long-term plans? buy property baby uh, I don't know <laughs> I don't know we came in here thinking we we're gonna stay for two years but then it's been almost six years and wow, now yeah. I can see myself living here forever okay yeah we just started building really close friends and they just had a baby here okay and now we're talking about having babies together okay. and raising them together so i'm like wow yeah my life is gonna be here for for a while that's awesome yeah i'm glad you are enjoying vietnam and and have uh kind of found your way here yeah it's great to see when now uh, our teachers uh, like come through the programs and then whether they stay teaching for long term or they go on to do other things it's great to see the journeys and, and the stories. So do you think you've grown as a person while you've been out here and gone on this journey? Yeah, tremendously. Just like the six months that I took um, to wait on your class, mm -hmm. like now I don't wait as much, right? Okay. Yeah, I can make decisions a lot faster, like, like even if it scares me. Yeah, you seem more confident than when I first met you. A lot more confidence. Yeah. Seems like you kind of found your way. I know, I was following you around. I was just like, Alex, how do you do marketing? And then you were like, this is how I do it. And now. <laughs> Did I tell you some stuff? I can't even remember. <laughs> yeah, you, you gave me an intro into like SEO. Okay, like, that yeah. That was really cool. And now we have like a whole bunch of SEO friends. And that's another thing in Vietnam I find. You can meet lots of people who are in into the same interests as you because it's such a big city here in Ho Chi Minh City, like 10 million people. Lots yeah. of expats, lots of Vietnamese as well, of course. And you can find people that are doing similar things to you and find communities of people, expat communities and communities around topics or hobbies yeah. and things like that. What's your favorite community? Well, just getting back into volleyball has been cool. I mean, the ninja, okay, I'm gonna be biased. The ninja teacher community is cool. Yes, yes. <laughs> just because we have people coming in every month to do our programs, uh, almost every month, especially in the last couple of years since the board has reopened. There's just been like a really nice community growing. Every month when we have a new course, we like have a big welcoming event. Got to come to the next one. Mm, uh, really. And yeah, it's just really nice to like introduce people to each other and then like see these lifelong friendships form and things like that. That's amazing. So yeah, anything you'd want to share with someone that might be considering coming to Vietnam and teaching English? Ask yourself, what are you going to do with all the free time you get? Nice. That's what I want them to know. <laughs> dream big. My, my, my dream was to just like make more than my parents and I did it within the three years here and like whatever you, you want to dream, you can dream it out here. That was so cheesy. That's good inspirational words, I like it. Yeah, coming out to Vietnam is obviously a 
a big decision for a lot of people, so it can be daunting. Oh, okay, girl, let me, let me break it down for you. Okay, there's like a lot of math. A lot of it comes down to like the cost, the savings, right? Like if you make $1,500, right, and your expenses are only $1,300, you're saving $300 every month, right? And you gotta just compare that to how much you're saving wherever you're living, right? Because mm. um, that's what's gonna help you the most. Sure, the upfront costs of moving here is like a lot. Maybe like, I don't know how much you would move here with like 5K, I don't it's know. It's good to have like a couple of months of living expenses plus the program yeah. fees. Those are scary purchases to make, but then you think about how much earnings that you savings that you can have every month like tallying it up you can have 3600 savings by the end of the year yeah so i mean it just depends how much you live on and how much you save and what you earn because you know you could earn a bit more if you taught a bit more yeah. you could earn like you know 1400 up to maybe like two thousand dollars if you worked a bit harder and more hours if you spend a thousand dollars a month then you can save anything above that yeah, look at your opportunity to save money versus like the upfront cost. Because the upfront cost is just going to be a one-time thing. Like me, thinking about paying for a ninja teacher, like I don't even think about that anymore. Mm -hmm. I just think about like the savings that I made. Don't think about what you're going to lose, like the negative $5,000. Think about how much you're going to earn and gain, plus the time to do what you want, to invest in yourself, mental health, career health, yeah, finance health. Those are all really exciting things to look forward to. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks, Annie. Uh, Dang it up. Awesome to chat to you. <laughs> For anyone that's interested in uh, learning more about living and teaching English in Vietnam, they can just subscribe to the channel, stay tuned. Do you want to like shout out any social media or something if anyone wants to follow you? Um, I'm at Cotton Annie at Instagram. Yeah. Throw it back to your, your uh, cotton yeah. candy days. Yeah, I still keep that. <laughs> yes, cotton Annie, cotton candy, Annie. Nice. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Bye.